I'm Keith McGuckin. Uh, I'm from Wellington, Ohio, but I prefer to be known from Oberlin, Ohio because it's more of an artsy town and I spend most of my time here. And every year you do a traditional um, type of Christmas uh, piece, uh, mm -hmm. artwork. What's your piece like this year? Uh, this piece is called uh, The Amazing Iron Lung Santa. Most of my stuff's kind of based on the 1950s, so this was going to be my quintessential 1950s piece, since this Santa here is particularly, his problem is he has polio. So as you can see in the video here, he's stuck in an iron lung, that's why he's called the Amazing Iron Lung Santa. If we could move over, I guess I shouldn't direct in the middle of this thing. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with what happens in an iron lung, but uh, essentially it does all the breathing for you. When you have polio, your lungs don't inhale and exhale very well, so on the back of this thing is a bellows that pumps in and out, so essentially it draws in and draws out. I know a lot of the kids and even parents aren't even going to know what the thing does or recognize it, so I'm hoping maybe they go to Google and Google the thing and see what an iron lung actually does. It's based exactly on a real piece. It's just a lot more ornamented than what you see. You have a regulator here pressure gauge. The mirror is essentially how they used to be because they used to, essentially they have no use of their arms and legs. Everything has to be done for them so all they can do is drink. And some of them used to have a television set here but it's pretty much just a mirror so he can see where he's going. And he has a little help from his elf back here. This is an upbeat message despite what you might see. It goes, uh, the little note down here, it goes, uh, Holy old schmoly old Santa says, not rain, sleet, snow, or even an iron lung will keep me from making my rounds. So you can see it's an upbeat message. Even though he's inflicted with polio, he could just be resting in a chamber somewhere, but he decided to go out and do his job anyway. So we put some skids on this thing, and you can see here is where he hooks up to the ranger. So he's still getting around one way or another. He's not going to let this get him down. So I know a lot of people are going to freak out like, ooh, I already had a guy yelling at me earlier about it, but I don't think he took the positive message out of the thing. And it is an upbeat message. No matter what your problem is, you can overcome it. Uh, this piece is called uh, Pyro on My Pillow. It's about a snowman named Norman who, at, under the cover of darkness, likes to go out and uh, torch foreclosed homes. His wife uh, thinks he's having an affair because he keeps coming home like uh, smelling of smoke and gasoline. So as it says in the movie, her line is, uh, you smell like you've been spooning under a dodge with some sultry chain-smoking grease monkey. Well, it turns out he is having an affair, all right, only his affair was, is with the fire, the old mighty fire. So. As you can see, you can go to uh, YouTube and see Pyro on My Pillow, and you can see the entire story here. How do you get to the site? Um, just, just go to Google YouTube. It? Just go, yeah, just go to YouTube or Google it, and then Google just, what? Uh, Pyro on My Pillow. Okay. And you can go to Google or YouTube, either one, and just put in Pyro on My Pillow, and that'll get you. Okay, this piece is uh, a replica of the Lee Harvey Oswald assassination. It's exactly how it happened in the basement of the Dallas Police Station in 63, only these are gingerbread men performing it. And the story that goes with this is uh, Keith McGuckin is proud to present a fascinating docudrama featuring the talents of that world-renowned acting troupe, the men of gingerbread players. Witness for yourself in glorious black and white as these scrumptious little thespians reenact the assassination of Lee Harvey Oswald. This performance is so convincing you'll feel like you're watching a live broadcast from the basement of the Dallas Police Station on November 24th, 1963. Hold on to your popcorn, everybody. Any second now, a shadowy figure named Jack Ruby will lunge from the crowd of onlookers and introduce Lee Harvey to the business end of a Stubnose 38 special, and you have a front row seat. The end.